you're a black belt in jiu-jitsu, but more importantly, you've beaten a lot of world-class jiu-jitsu people. You've done very well at the highest levels of competition. Yeah, I wouldn't necessarily say I've beaten them as much as I've trained with them. And they understand whoever it is that through training with me, that like, I'm not just a judo guy. Like I know how to do jujitsu, right? And yeah. if any one of them were to come to me and like say, hey, you know, I wanna feel what it feels like to do judo with me, th they would quickly understand that like the way I approach one is very different than the way I approach the other. Like we yeah. probably wouldn't be friends if they did judo with me versus if they right. did jujitsu with me. I'm curious asking for a friend because mostly because I'll do a little judo with you today. So you clearly, cause you're a great instructor and teacher, you have a mode where you can demonstrate a technique. Do you know how to like spar where you're going like 50%? <laughs> it's hard to put like a percentage to it because I've never in all of my jujitsu ever gone a hundred percent. In jujitsu? Yeah. yeah. Like I had a conversation with Salo one time where we were talking about like jujitsu and training. And I was like, well, if I got his arm, I would just break it. And he was like, but what if he tapped? I go, that's not my responsibility. <laughs> if he taps and the ref doesn't say anything, you just break it. You just keep yeah. going. Yeah. He goes, but the tap means it's over. And I said, no, the ref tells me when it's over. I go, I never give you the opportunity to tap because if you have the opportunity to tap, that means you had the opportunity to think about how to get out, make a decision that you can't, then tap. I clearly operated too slowly. Yeah. So there's a, it's either broken or I don't have it. You're when a it comes terrifying to judo. person to go against in judo. Like the, on the ground, it's like everything you did, that's, that's amazing. Um, that's really amazing. That's what made you a really fun person to watch because you really went to war with these people. Yeah. So you know what it's like to go 100% in judo. I do, because I know what it's like to train with somebody under the mentality of, I'm gonna do everything I want to do, you're gonna do nothing you want to do, and you're gonna accept that. Do you ever train in judo where, where you let people get stuff? Of like, course, all the time. Now, or like- Always. You, even when you're sort of building up the four years, building up to the Olympics, like there's smaller guys that are throwing you in the gym and that kind of stuff. No, I never said that. Okay. <laughs> that never came out of my mouth. I said, I let people do stuff. I never said smaller people throw me. Oh, you mean you let them get a grip, but then you'll position yourself in such a way that it's 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 hopeless. It's like the what- no, The number one skill set that judo is gonna teach you is the ability to give people false hope, <laughs> right? Cause I can let- I'm really let, looking forward to the video we're gonna shoot later today. <laughs> like I can let you take a grip. Yeah. I can let you think that there's opportunity, but what you don't understand is by the position and angle that I'm in, yeah. it's actually false hope. Yeah. Like as long as you don't know that it is, then now I'm free to operate and do what I want.